Hey everybody, this is Erica Sabo. Welcome back. So today I'm going to be reviewing a game that I have been waiting very, very patiently for, and that is Tales of Hearts R. I'm not going to indulge too much right now, but I am a big Tales fan, and I have been a big Tales fan for a while. So, as you can imagine, this is something that I was really looking forward to, especially in terms of having a portable release of a game that's been out for years now. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to give you a bit of a rundown, just give you an idea of what the game is like, and if it's worth your time. So I guess let's get started. So I'm a big, big fan of the Tales of series, whether we're talking about Tales of Asperia, Legendia, Exilia, a Symphonia, Abyss, like the list just goes on and on. And there's, you know, while I definitely have my favorites, in this case, Vesperia and Abyss, there's a certain magic about all of them that I really enjoy, and there are certain aspects of each of them that I enjoy more than others. Uh, but, uh... I don't know, it's a series that I feel like has been very consistent over the years and something I've really grown to admire. So I think you can imagine how excited I was to see uh, Tales of Hearts released, a game that I think was originally released in Japan in 2008, so it's super exciting to finally have it here to be able to try it out for myself. Tales of Hearts R stars Core Meteor, seriously, that name, that name is ridiculous and just horrible and so many things. Okay, so he is this teenager whose sheltered world is turned upside down when a young girl named Kohaku washes up on the shore of his village. The girl and her brother Hisui are actually being pursued by an evil witch, and after an encounter with her leads to the death of Kor's grandfather and the destruction of Kohaku's Spiria, which is a bit like a culmination of all her emotions, but with each emotion having split up to different parts of the vast world, it's up to Kor and his friends to pick up each piece and make Kohaku whole again. I'm gonna be completely honest and tell you that I found this story incredibly mediocre. So mediocre, I'm drinking wine while telling you about this. So if I slur, I greatly apologize. <laughs> this story definitely does get better over time, which is pretty typical of Tales of Games, but patience is needed, just as in Grace's F or Abyss, although this story doesn't unfold nearly as well as Abyss's did. As you'd expect from a action JRPG, there's too many birds! There's too many birds out The birds are singing! Isn't it beautiful? Golly! As you'd expect from an action JRPG, combat becomes a pivotal part of the experience. In this case, our characters use their somas, which are weapons fueled by their spiria, in order to duke it out with enemies. As in every other Tales of Game, we have our regular attacks, we have our arts, and you're able to link those together for combos. However, in Tales of Hearts R, uh, we're introduced to the chase link system, which allows us to, after giving enough consecutive hits to an enemy, uh, trigger a break, and then create this devastating link that just demolishes foes. <laughs> it's a really easy way of getting around tough battles, which is kind of a good and bad thing considering the fact that you probably want a bit more of a challenge, and as of late, these games have not been nearly as challenging as they should be, but uh, you know, it's a, it's a nice little addition to add something new to the experience. It's not as complex as, say, Grace's F's battle system, which is honestly the best battle system to date in the series, but it makes for a bit of variety amidst the usual. In addition, we also have free roaming capabilities in battles as well, which lets you really take advantage of your enemy's weaknesses in the midst of it. While random encounters are back in this installment, the Tales of series is easily the best combat for the subgenre, hands down. That's just a no-brainer right there. <laughs> so there's really no room for me to complain in any of this. If there's one thing I really didn't like about combat, it was the slow recovery time for throwbacks. Now this is something we haven't really been seeing in Tales of Games as of recently, uh, and it was not a very nice surprise considering while I do love, I do love my retro games, Thinking back at the awful throwbacks you would get in your old NES games and when you would get hit and you'd just fly back really slowly and then a lot of times you would die from something else then coming off the other side of the screen. Yeah, I'm sure you know. Uh, it's, it's pretty bad. It doesn't happen in the same way here, but it really does slow down gameplay. And considering it's such a fast-paced combat system, it's just, it doesn't jive well at all. So, you know, it 
It could be worse, I suppose. It could be worse, but this is just one of those inevitable flaws. There's a few other things worth mentioning, one being the lack of English voice acting. While this may come as a surprise to many Tales of fans, I'm perfectly fine with us listening to the already impeccable Japanese voice acting. It's emotive and really gives our vibrant, even if archetypical, characters some life. The humor and energy is definitely there. I could say the same about the visuals, which are rich with color and provide us with a very pretty atmosphere for a portable Tales of game. By no means is the level design consistently impressive, sometimes it can be pretty sloppily done to be honest, but Hearts R does make a big push in leaving you feeling compelled to explore more of the vibrant world. Tales of Hearts R is by no means an incredible game. But that doesn't stop it from being a pretty fun experience overall, even if it is on the subpar side. It definitely wasn't one of my favorites. I mean, I already told you, Vesperia and Abyss are, like, really high. They're, like, somewhere up there. Uh, <laughs> and I, this just didn't meet that for me. But I will tell you right now, it is a really nice short and sweet JRPG. It's not very long, you know, depending on how much time you plan on spending on it. I like spending a ton of time on my games. But for me, uh, it's, like, around, like, a 40-hour experience which is really short considering these games are typically around 60 plus. However, in this case it might have worked in its favor considering some of the gripes I had mentioned. So yeah, I mean it's it's not it's not a terrible game, don't think that. You know, I know a lot of people have expressed that it's not not a very good one, but I would say it's definitely a solid title in this series. You know, the world is yours to discover. So I hope you enjoyed my review of Tales of Hearts R on the Vita. This is a beautiful game. Not the greatest of games, but it is a beautiful game, and it was pretty fun, and I'm really sorry for all this noise out here. I guess it's just so early in the morning for some reason all the birds decided to come out and sing, and then the construction guys decided to come out, and it's just like a loud morning. This is what happens when you film outside your window. Or in your window, or beside your window. I don't even know anymore. Anyways, yeah, so here's my review. I really hope you enjoyed it. Big thank you to Bandai Namco for sending me a review copy of this game. Thanks so much for your patience. I just wanted to make sure I could spend enough hours with this game so I could give a proper opinion about it. And now the... Oh, the telephone's ringing downstairs. This is just too much. Too many noises. So, yeah, no, thank you so much to Bandai Namco. This is really awesome. Uh, I really, really would love to hear your thoughts on this game. It is a, uh, a really, really interesting game, and I'm happy to have it in my collection. I want to have all these Tales games in my collection, good or bad, so it's, uh, yeah, I, I'm happy to have it here. Really curious to hear what you think, and I hope you tune in again soon for lots more videos. I'll see you all later, okay? All right, peace.